Well, hello everybody. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with By My Spirit. And we are on November the 1st. November the 1st, 2016. We have a total of nine days counting today and then the 8th of November until the total national vote will be taken in this year's election. I'd like to just do a couple of things tonight to share with you some things to think about. I'm going to read uh, a couple of uh, things that I got again from Apostle Dutch Sheets. And he's been talking very strongly about what every Christian, and I'm saying that word, every Christian, if you have proclaimed Jesus Christ as your Savior, this word is for you. Because we are speaking to every Christian. Christian. And the thing that I want to get across is also what is being talked about by Lance Walnow, by Rick Joyner, by Dr. Garlow out in California, many of the other pastors who have placed themselves around Donald Trump, There is one message, and this is highlighted again by Dutch Sheets. Start measuring your vote by what is really at stake. Again, I'm going to say it just like all of these other great men of God. I am the least of all of these, that's for sure. But I will say this because I have heard it clearly. What is at stake is our nation. Not maybe for today, maybe not even for tomorrow, but what about 40 50, 60, or 100 years down line where we're talking about the total effect of the election that would take place in this year. And it is time, I'll say it again, it is time that the body of Christ in this nation becomes united. Let me give you a piece of scripture very quickly. There's some interesting story of what happened to Israel, written about in Judges 19 and 20. It was basically a time of a civil war, if you will, that took place among the tribes, and there was, interestingly enough, it started over a homosexual event that was to take place. You can read about it in Judges 19. As a result of the request of a group of men, homosexuals of that time, who wanted to have their way with a guest, the result was a woman was killed and her body was cut into 12 pieces, one piece for each tribe, and sent out. And they were looking to gain, I guess the best word is revenge, 
for what took place. But it was to a way of resolving and punishing the guilty in this event. And it wasn't a small event in the sense of what it resulted in was a huge set of battles. And what it was said in verse 11 of chapter 20, it says this, Thus all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, united as one man. I'll read it again. Thus all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, united as one man. We are at that point where the body of Christ in this nation must become united as one man. And that means putting down, putting down traditions, familiar spirits, religious spirits, ethnic spirits, cultural spirits, all of the things that literally divide us instead of unite us. Let's look at what Dutch Sheets talks about for a few moments here. If we don't stop what is going on right now, you can forget about recovery in four to eight years. It'll be more like 40 years because somebody's going to stack this court with a minimum of two, three, maybe five appointees, and they're going to go up not for four to eight years. No, there'll be a lifetime appointees. And it will change the advantage that will last for generations. The advantage being those that would want to put in a progressive, liberal, judge-oriented group of men and women who will then determine the laws of the land. Please make sure, please make sure that you understand the elements of this election. It's not just a personality. It's just not a personality. You're going to also be voting for the Supreme Court. I think I've highlighted that on other recordings. Here's a couple of other points that Dutch mentions. He says, I submit to the church. You better stop playing games and judging in the natural and start judging by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, by understanding and asking God to give you insight and to give you clarity in your vision. So let us stop right there. So Lord, I ask right now, for the body of Christ in America, for your church in America to call out to you. Holy Spirit, show the church in America how to become united. Let them seek out. Do away with all of the things that separate us, but join us, unite us, that we would come together to see that we have a voice in this nation that will make it great again, great in your eyes, great in the eyes of the nations and the peoples of the world. 
Dutch also says, it's enough of the religious. I'm not going to vote at all because I don't like anybody. That's a cop-out. That's a cop-out. And we don't serve a God that wants us to cop-out, to make an excuse. We are called, each one of us, to be a voice in this nation that makes a difference. I've highlighted that before. In all the different realms and areas of our society, we are called to have a voice. It doesn't mean that all of us will have the same voice in all areas, but God will give you a voice to go into the area that you have been called to so you can be the voice that will make a difference and add the values of God into that area. Then he goes on. In the days of the ecclesia, ecclesia meaning the church, in biblical times, you are not allowed as a member of the ecclesia to not show up and vote. You had to vote. And I say to the church today, you're going to have to take a stand. You're going to have to take a stand. That is the problem with too much of the church today. Well, I'll vote my conscience. Is that really a stand? Are you really making a stand when you can say, I'm going to vote my conscience? Or are you willing to stay up and say, no more abortions, no more lying, no more cheating, no more deception, no more government that says one thing and does another. It doesn't matter what party affiliation, because we've seen that in all of them. And again, I'll say, you're not voting for a personality. You're voting for someone who can lead this nation and move forward. You're going to have to also look at who is going to be surrounding the leadership of who will be ruling this nation. Let's get real, frank, and honest. All you have to do is look at the past eight years and all of the challenges we have faced in this nation by the administration, by the administration of the current president. And then look again at the administration possibilities that would come from Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. Many of the people who have surrounded Hillary Clinton have already been removed out of her presidential campaign because of lying and cheating and more information is coming out in that same regards, right now. So, Lord, I am saying, as we look at how we need to be united, we need to be united in the clarity of your truths, in the clarity of your word, and not wavering from it. Lord, I say, drag people back who are wavering, shake them by the collar and said, don't waver. Stand strong. Stand strong with me and I'll stand strong with you. Could it be, could it even be in the sense 
of where we are today and how we look at things going, even on end time things, is this election even a time where there is going to be a separation of the wheat and the tares? So, Lord, I say, continually shine your light. I thank you for the light that has been shining, exposing more of the things that need to come forth so people can make the right judgment, the right vote, so we can become united in an effort to restore our nation with your help. We have to go and vote. And Lord, we thank you for that opportunity to represent you, to represent you. So Father, right now, I close out this message was just saying, we will see this nation restored when we ask you to restore it. We will see this nation restored when we, as the ecclesia within this nation, take a stand that is for you and your righteousness. Lord, we ask you to set us apart, to set us apart. Just as Jesus said, I will take my disciples and I will set them apart. I will set them apart to me. I will set them apart in my truth. So Lord, we ask that you will set us apart. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're getting down to the final hours, the final days, and we will see the hand of God move because we have asked that His will will be done here in this nation just as it is in heaven. We'll see you the next time. This is Douglas Allen Frazier saying we will see you here, there, or in the air.